And liftoff. Thank you so much to everyone for joining us for this episode of the Tim and Jim show. I'm Tim Sohn with Sohn Social Media Solutions, and I'm here with my amazing co-host, Mr. Jim. It's all yours. Welcome, everyone. I'm Jim Fuse with Fusion Marketing, and we're excited to have joining us today Brian Wallace of Now Sourcing out of Cincinnati, Ohio, and we're going to talk about how to hire the right marketing solution for your small business. Brian and I talked about this a few weeks. It's something he's very passionate about. So, Brian, tell us a little bit about yourself because you are an, an amazing guy, and I'm really glad you were willing to join us today. Oh, were you kidding? I wouldn't miss an opportunity like this. Thank you. I get to put on a suit and everything and yeah, <laughs> coffee ready to go. So gosh, what do I do? Who am I? So I'm originally from New York, lived in Louisville, Kentucky for a while. Uh, our headquarters is still there and now live and work in Cincinnati, Ohio, the magic triangle that nobody else kind of does or cares about, but it's all in the same time zone. So whatever, we'll just count it like that. <laughs> so basically I change people's minds for a living and help make things understandable because everybody likes to hide behind product grids and charts and a bunch of math and data and stats. But the problem with that is it's all garbage, right? 88% of all stats are made up on the spot. Sometimes 92, sometimes 50, you know, whatever I'm in the mood for, however the wind is blowing. So there's just so much that tries to take up our attention on the internet, right? I mean, it's just like, it's become just a digital landfill and any moment I'm looking at a screen and something's trying to pummel my eyes and my ears, right? Like I can't even go up an elevator anymore without being spammed. I can't go to the gas station anymore without like, here, go buy our coffee and donuts and stuff. It's like, <laughs> chill out. Did so, you say coffee? Coffee? Yeah, coffee? What? <laughs> Girl? Hmm. Not a Starbucks ad, but I was just out of meeting and grabbed some on the way. Retweets do not equal endorsement, but this isn't true. <laughs> All yeah. right. Yep. So let's have some fun. Yes. So, so Brian, I know one of the big things we wanted to talk about today was, you know, there's small businesses need to take some steps that to, to do before they commit to a marketing plan. And that's where it seems like a lot of them are making mistakes. What are your, what are your thoughts on that? I think that there's a bunch of marketing charlatans that don't know how to work for other people. So they just hide on the internet and they make a bunch of outrageous claims. And then everybody's like, Oh, I'll just Google the internet, you know? Clearly, I can trust everyone on the internet with all of my business and my money. So then um, they don't really ask the right questions. They don't know how to do due diligence. They don't ask for examples or references or any kind of work. Like, are you going to hire a Twitter expert when the guy's got 24 Twitter followers and you've got more yourself? I mean, common sense, right? But common sense isn't so common as we'll explore today. So people make an inexpert decision to hire person X get burned by person X, and then throw up their hands, table flip, throw the computer across the room, and they say that all marketing sucks. I mean, they're half right, a lot of it sucks, but <laughs> there's actually some people that are on the side of good that can do good for you. But you're outmanned and you're outgunned when you're just you starting in the basement and you're just Googling around. I mean, if you look at, it's hilarious, right? You look at the success stories of people who are in the marketing industry, and a lot of them, you see this common thread where it's like, I hired someone to do SEO and I got ripped off. So then I spent all day and night, you know, smarting, just sitting there, you know, nursing my wounds in the, the dark corner of my basement, crying myself. <laughs> and eventually I emerged as the foremost leader, right? So a right. lot of people, a lot of invention comes out of necessity. Whenever you see people and all their success stories and you really trace back the etymology and the lineage to it, a lot of people, a lot of founders, a lot of success stories always come back to I saw a deficiency in the world. I made this for me. I don't know why everybody's listening to this, but hey, everybody seems to like what I have to say, right? That's kind of where everything goes. So I really feel bad for the small business because they're the ones that are, you know, it's like they're like the sandwich generation of business, right? So they're simultaneously like fueling growth in American GDP, yet they're also getting ripped off by everybody who's just trying to sell them snake oil. So it's horrible. And a delightful thing once you get it right, but you might not last that long because businesses, especially in their early days, can't take a lot of hits, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. And and I know I've heard a lot of stories from my clients. Uh, oftentimes it's a, a national company they end up working with and the customer service isn't very good. 
uh, you know, they've worked with local people, they've worked with national companies. Um, Jim, have, have, have you heard things like that as well? Well, you have all these big companies even, and I won't name any names like, oh, for, yeah. you know, one ninety nine, we'll do your social media for you, for you, the small business. They don't even know your zip code, let alone your local market. And so, but they're like, oh, but they're posting for me on social media, but it's like, but are the posts of any value? And and I think you just see so much of that. I mean, and it, I guess I always liked it, the whole joke of, uh, you know, activity doesn't necessarily mean productivity. And just because you're posting every day doesn't mean your business is going to grow uh, in the digital marketing space. And I think that Brian brings up a an excellent point. You know, it's the fact that you're like, oh, I'm, you know, where's the due diligence? My friend Jeff Sheehan talks about that all the time. Do you look at what these people are doing themselves on the platforms? That's part of how I got into this is I was running into these people saying, oh, we do social media for X dollars. And if you just go look at what some of these people do, you're like, people are paying them for that? You're triggering me in every possible way. I, I might have to just flip this table over and we're going to lose our connection. But that's okay. I mean, everybody likes hearing me rant about that. So yeah. carry on. Yeah. Yes. Well, but that's part of what we wanted to talk about today, Brian, was the fact that these are the these are the mistakes that small businesses are making. And it's a crit I mean, marketing is is a critical part of your business. So right. why do people try to treat it as an afterthought? And I mean, give give us some of the things I get. Tell us, Brian, some of the things that really get you going that you think people need to really think about. I'm going to have to start my own show called Brian's Grumpy Corner or something, huh? <laughs> so, um, gosh, there's so many problems with this. Where to even start? Well, kind of like what you said with, I can't believe people get paid to do X and it's only a hundred dollars and you just get paid to post. So why would you pay like almost nothing when you know that there are people that get paid a fortune to do stuff right? So I never understand why people try to save a few bucks to just ruin their business reputation, right? Like if you were a publicly traded company, do you think you would hire like some social media company to post for you for $50 a month? No, your stock would go down. Why would you do that to yourself, right? But people are like, well, I just have a small budget. I'm just starting out. Look, if you're not prepared to pay what it's worth, then let's just say thousands of dollars or tens of thousands or hundreds, depending on what you're trying to do for the product and service, you don't have a business, right? Like you have to ha earn X amount. And by the way, marketing and sales related efforts should be a percentage of how much you're bringing in. This is an investment. So don't on either side of the coin, people look for the race to the bottom and let me just find the thing that's the most cost effective the thing that's the most cost effective isn't the thing that's the cheapest more likely it's the thing that is the most expensive or almost the most expensive because you're paying for talent so if you know i've been professionally yelling at all this crap on the internet for 23 years i started my business 13 and a half years ago so if i can listen to everything about your company and in 38 seconds tell you something brilliant that could make you millions of dollars and then i charge you five grand is it worth it or do Absolutely. you want to pay me per hour you're i mean you're the problem if that is how you think right so i'm if you see me distracted i'm not doing email i'm telling everybody on facebook that i'm yelling at the internet right now right <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so well, tim you want to you had a comment go ahead no, I was just going to say, we just recently started working with a, uh, a business, a local business, and and they hired a, this national company to do do their social media, and they created all these posts on Facebook, and they had zero likes when we got the page. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, so that's where we're starting from. Right. You know, but well, there's so people... many businesses like that. They just don't oh, yeah. under... They just don't have knowledge enough, I think, to... I don't agree you know, with that. They have the exactly. knowledge, but okay. they think that it doesn't apply to this because they're not a marketing expert. This is a very mm. important point. So whenever you see an industry, like remember like Bitcoin, blockchain stuff, everybody's like, don't worry, there's no fundamentals. It's unlike anything that's ever been there. No, all businesses have fundamentals. You can do math and make sense out of things. Part of it is logic and part of it's emotion. I get that. But if you're going to say that it's like a bucket list. Well, 
I got the Twitter account. I put in a logo. I tweeted, I'm done. Well, what the heck are you talking about? I mean, I remember back in the day when Twitter was just starting and, you know, what, like 13 years ago or so, right? I remember when Dell specifically had a channel where they sold products and people were, and I know the guy who personally who did that. So you can say when this person tweeted from the Dell overstock account, whatever it was, and they started selling hundreds of thousands of dollars of equipment that was like end of line anyway, you can say, this is an ROI. It's not made up. Now, some things are just maybe for awareness and there might be trickier things. And we can get into, hey, Meyer, Rob, nice to see you here. So um, I think it's very important to understand as business people, especially as small business people, when you might be the, the one person show, you know how a business works and you how, know how the numbers add up. So yes, some of it's going to be top of funnel, some of it's going to be mid, some is going to be all the way in the bottom, depends on your sales cycle, all that. But for somebody to just say, oh yeah, you know, I have one, 10, 20 Twitter followers and I just checked a couple of boxes. It's not a thought experiment. This is my business, right? This is my life or death moment that it's got to work. So I don't understand when people get into those kinds of discussions and they turn their brain, which is working right off as they get deluded by marketers. And I'm sorry, marketers, I know you want to all make a quick buck, but this is what I like to call working for the company once. Because if you're a spam artist with them, why should they ever hire you again? And by the way, there's this thing called reputation. Like when I go to somebody's website and I go to their about page and it just says, our team has X years of combined experience. They can't even tell me who it is or like their LinkedIn profile or something. I know not to trust them. And I thank them for it by not giving them business. Right. Well, this is common sense. Don't turn off common sense just because it's an industry you don't understand. Now, kind of like investment people would say, don't invest in something you don't understand. So in a similar way in marketing, if the person cannot relate to you in a way that you can understand them, don't hire them. <laughs> You're not going to be magicians later. The only magic trick is going to be that your wallet's going to be empty. You don't want that trick. It sucks. That's a that's a really good analogy. I never thought of it that way. My, that's a good one. My world is analogies, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tim, you want to ask uh, the next question? Sure, absolutely. <clears throat> but before that, I want to thank you all for watching, and we want you to leave comments below or questions down below for Brian. We're having a great conversation here. And we want to thank Isobel for watching over on LinkedIn. She says, marketing is an investment and cheap services are a liability in the long run. True. I have one driver that I pay well and I get value for my money. He makes sure that my travel plans are smooth. So uh, next question, Brian, uh, what are the business mistakes you see being made and how do small businesses avoid falling into bad marketing traps? So, oh boy. Again, th this could be a multi-hour rant. I know we don't have all day. So let's just pick one lane and stick to it. So who here, show of hands, has heard when people are full service marketing companies? Okay. Yeah. Who believes that crap? It's all right. So by it's some measures of different um, ratings agencies and stuff like that, some people have my company ranked as the top infographic agency in the nation. And that's not me saying it. Like Jeff Bezos says, your reputation is what other people say about you when you're not in the room. Any idiot can call themselves a guru, expert, blah, blah, blah. That's not important. So whenever people say full service, get the heck out of there because right. they're lying to you. There's way too much marketing stuff, just social media. Could you think of 25 different specialties just within social? Right, Absolutely. you got to have something on the website and it's got to be on mobile and conversion rate optimization and email marketing. And social, sure, but social goes every which way. Influencers, micro-influencers, people that make content, people that make graphics, right? It's not just one person. There's a whole yeah. planet, right? It's absurd. So the sad reality is the uninitiated small business person who's just getting started with their marketing probably should just do a little bit more homework to track down specific experts on what they need. Maybe they already have a rockin' website. Right. So for like when I come in, I'm like, if you didn't set the table, hang up the phone and go fix that. Sounds like Dr. Phil. If you don't put <laughs> can't put 
horseshoes and a pillowcase and call it a pillow, right? So like, it's very important that you understand what you're getting into with these places. Don't ask people to do things outside of their expertise when they're marketers, because they'll just take your money, right? right. right. Oh, do you do websites? Sure I do. Uh, yeah, I'll just quick ask somebody for help. People that you hire should be good at the stuff and have a track record. Right. I can show you thousands of infographics. I can show you a basketball player who got a $64 million contract. I can show you companies that have got acquired by hundreds of millions of dollars and stuff. So I have a track record that we could be here all day. If your marketer person doesn't have a track record, ugh, I don't think so. Maybe the marketer will be honest and it'd be like, listen, bro, like I just started and I'll give you a low rate and I'm just kind of getting started. People that can be honest like that, take those people instead of the people who are just all fake getting dressed up. I get real dressed up. I look like this in real life. If you saw me at an event, I'd look like this. Yes. yes. And I have seen you. I have seen you. Right. 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 Yes. So like, I just look like this. I'm not putting on a front. This is me, whether you right. like it or not people. And I, and I think, you know, Brian, I, I'm completely with you. I I've go to networking events and I do the tongue biting when I hear someone stand up like, Oh, we, we do everything. We do web design and IT and social media. And it's like, no, you don't. You're there's you're no going to tell these do. people that there's no way. There, there's no way that one person can know all this stuff. I tell people, I collaborate with people that are good at those things, but I don't personally do it. Exactly. And, and I can give you even choices of people that I vetted because I'm not going to just tell anybody like, oh, yeah, just go to this person if, if I if they haven't built trust with me. And I think, you know, that is so important. And, and it goes back to your point, right? When you're setting the foundation of your business as, as how you're going to get marketed, mm -hmm. you better have all your, you know, checks in line because maybe you don't need to be on Twitter and don't listen to these people. It's like, oh, you got to be everywhere. You might want to listen <sighs> on some platforms, but if you're a B2B company, why are you wasting your time on Facebook? At least that's my opinion. You know, you're not going to find a lot of companies shopping on Facebook and, and you need content that can be found through search on Google or infographics that explain what you're doing. Cause right. I know that's what you guys do. Right. And it's not a plug to endlessly say that we do infographics, but wait, maybe I just did that a little bit, but you've seen me roll my eyes several times on this. An important point. When you're doing your due diligence on, let's say you found the specialist, that specialist, if they've been in the marketing industry for a while, they should be able to quarterback a whole bunch of other people to refer you, right? If they don't know anybody, what's wrong with these people? Where do they live in a cave? Like it doesn't make any sense. They should be able to help string together stuff. In fact, if they, so let's say somebody hires me and they need an expert that does X. I should be able to recommend and or vet the people that they had in mind. Right. Absolutely. Marketers, specialist marketers that help consult with small business should be able to bring that. If you don't have a value add and compete on value instead of on price, whatever the heck that garbage is, right? You're going to compete and I'm going to get the business for $20. Like, how are you going to live? I guess like maybe you just go donate blood and plasma all day or something and you're <laughs> go collect all the cans in your neighborhood. But last I checked, if you're a marketer, you should be focused on marketing instead of doing all that garbage. So I just, I don't get it, right? You should be able to have a, a full network of people, not just for pay and kickbacks and garbage, but because they're good. I love when people like, they introduce me for the first time and they're like, oh, you know, can you give me a recommendation on LinkedIn? Can you recommend me for everything? It's like, bro, like, I don't even know you. Can you show me anything that says that you're good at something? Why the heck should I give you business burn my reputation in the ground just because like what i'm your fairy godmother i'm the linkedin oprah fairy no <laughs> maybe i am but i'm gonna have to know you a little bit you gotta earn my trust just like everything else right i, I and I, you know that is that is such words of wisdom and i hope people just listen to what you said because you're right why would i give you a recommendation or a five-star review if i've never worked with you Right. I mean, just so your numbers go up, because it goes back to that's goes back on my credibility when things don't go the way that mm -hmm. they thought, because those are the people that trust me. So I that is that is so critical for for businesses to understand and marketers that are out there. If you're not being honest with people, you know, I, I look at it's it's all about karma, ultimately. Right. Nobody pays me to be nice. That doesn't mean I'm a jerk. 
It just means nobody pays me to be nice. They want to know what's wrong with stuff. Sometimes maybe I could be used as a political battle internally where it's like, ah, you know, we want to do this and we want to do that. But let this, that kind of thinking aside, you should, once you hire your expert, you should trust your expert and not use them as a magic marker, you know, thing right. on the internet to just abuse. There you go. Pinata. There you go. Struggling for analogies. That was a good analogy. There you go. So Brian, do you, so small businesses struggle. Do you have any tips or tools that you would recommend they start with if they're on a tight budget? I mean, I, mean, I think part of it is probably convincing them that they've got to make this a part of their budget and commit. Yeah, I think don't underspend on garbage. So wait till you have enough money to do it. Until then, maybe you have to do it. Or to your point before, not everybody has to be on Twitter and Facebook and TikTok and this and that, right? I mean, if I look at my percentage of the pie of time that I spend on social, almost all of it goes to LinkedIn because that's where I play to. Obviously, I, I mean, I have Facebook open all day and I use Messenger a lot and I use it a little bit. And I'm, I'm actually starting to use WhatsApp a lot too, which just hit the 2 billion mark, believe it or not. Right. WhatsApp for business is absolutely skyrocketing. So if you all need a social network, instead of playing around getting spied on by the Chinese government with TikTok, go look at WhatsApp, kids. You'd be amazed how much stuff goes on there. You'd be amazed because it's a much more intimate connection with the people that you do business with. And just like Facebook and all those other places, it has stories. And you can see who's viewed your story and at what time and all that. It's kind of absurd. Like it's a... And maybe it's just our uh, our world purview as Americans, but the whole rest of the world's on WhatsApp all day long. And if you communicate in and out of different countries, that should be your jam. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of them should just roll up their sleeves and do it. I mean, they got into business and be small business people. So go friggin' do some of it. I'm one of 13 people in America that's part of something called the Google Small Business Advisory Council. Also a little plug for them. So Google itself understands the plight of small business. So if you just... Um, it's on like all social networks. Uh, we actually just did a Twitter chat yesterday. So uh, every couple of months or so, so Twitter, Google, small business, and the government, specifically the US uh, Small Business Association, do SBA chat, hashtag SBA chat. So yesterday we actually talked all about starting a new business. So there were tons and tons of great practitioners and all sorts of small business, uh, providers of all sorts of services. Like I know um, PayPal, QuickBooks, like every kind of thing you could imagine and just different governmental entities all had a great time. And Google and the SBA have just endless resource pages for all that stuff, which is a little bit more vetted than trust me, I'm on the internet, you know? Right. And I think that's a great point because I think w just the list of stuff you went through, there's so much out there that those are some great resources, Google and even the SBA, because, you know, you want to make sure if you're going to make an investment that you know what you're doing. And even from the perspective, because I'm a huge fan of Google My Business, you know, mm -hmm. my company is a Google My Business agency oh, yeah. to help people with that because it's free. And, you know, as I, I don't know, the stat maybe has adjusted, but it's kind of like 92% of people start for their problem, you know, mm -hmm. solution on Google, not on Facebook and the Facebook search bar. So, you have to think about you're we're all problem solvers. And I think that too many people get hung up on like, oh, my company's called X. Well, no one's ever heard of it. Mm -hmm. And and I had this conversation with someone yesterday. It's like, I'm not going to find your business if you're not providing content that tells me what you do. Mm -hmm. Just a, a quick note. So a lot of people, Google's an enormous empire, right? Or Alphabet or whatever we are now. So... I didn't say Google my business, although I definitely recommend if you're a business, I mean, the local search of that is through the roof and incredible. What I'm talking about is something called Google small business right, that I right. sit on the advisory council for. Right. So if you actually go and search across all social channels, you'll find it. But if you go to google.com slash small business, it has like a whole page of like everything Google and it's, it's actually really helpful. I'm actually going to put that into the uh, the banner here since you mentioned that. That's a good there you go. Because a lot of people just, they don't know about all the stuff that's out there, right? So nobody's going to charge you to just look at that website. The SBA has all sorts of free mentoring with places like SCORE. And all this stuff is just free and open to the public. It's amazing. Right. And, and do, you, do you have any books you would recommend that small businesses maybe at least take a look at? I mean, there's like 
Oh, maybe yeah. three to five that they should start with? Oh gosh, only three to five. All right, fine. So um, let's see, where shall I begin? So it depend So some books I'm gonna recommend for everybody and other books, it's gonna depend on the situation, okay? So let's say you are working at a company and you're like, should I quit my job and then go start this business? So probably not, right? A lot of people don't quit your day job and then your dream dies on the vine while you also die because you quit your job. There's a great book by John Acuff called Quitter, not Twitter, but Quitter. <laughs> talk all about that. So let's say you already made the plunge and there's nothing we can do about that anymore. There's a great book by the Eisenberg brothers called Be Like Amazon. Mm -hmm. Even a lemonade stand can do it. That's a fabulous one. Um, I think there's another book that everybody should read all about a subject called operational style theory called Walk, Climb, or Fly by Lee Durst. This is an important book because it teaches you how you operate as a person. You're either a walker, a climber, or a flyer. I'm not gonna ruin the book for you, but it's gonna teach you how you operate and it's gonna teach you how to interoperate with others. And if you're going to be a small business, you kind of have to work with other people, right? So that's kind of an essential thing. So, I, I mean, there's kind of endless books I can recommend in every direction. Well, those, uh, are, those are three I had not heard about. So thank you, Brian. I'm going to definitely add those. Let me, give you one, let me give you one more. I can't resist this because I just had him on the podcast. So Bob Berg wrote a book called The Go-Giver. Because yeah. a lot of people are like, Brian, you're nice. Why do you even help people? I'm like, oh, gosh. Like, why do I help people? That's horrible. Like, what kind of world do you believe in? Are you just in a horrible, every man for himself, scarcity, garbage mindset? Or do you believe in a big, beautiful, bountiful world where there's more than enough business for everybody? Listen, giving is one of the best things you can do. I mentor and do all sorts of stuff on the side and people resonate with that. So even if you were just like a capitalist baby eating monster and you only did it to get business, I think if you gave time and effort and helping people and just, you know, like right now, like you're not paying me to be on the show. There are people that would be like, Sorry guys, sorry Tim and Jim, I'm not gonna come on your show unless you give me $10,000, right? You know those people. Yes. And you don't have them on the show, that's gross. So who you are matters. People hire people that they know, like, and trust, right? So I would definitely recommend that too, just as an operational mindset for how to interact with people, whether you're in sales or not, The Go-Giver, and there's a whole series of books that came after that. Uh, that's another one I'm definitely gonna put high up on the recommendation list. Yes. Yeah. And we were fortunate to have uh, Bob Berg on uh, oh, last summer and he's an amazing, that. amazing man and uh, mm -hmm. follow him all the time. He he definitely, and you're so right. I mean, it, it is about, to me anyway, it is about giving, right? It's like, if we can help other people, to me, that's where I get the most satisfaction about helping others succeed. Yeah. And, and I know you're, you're big on that as well. And that's one of the reasons, one of the reasons why we asked you to be on the show, because we know you like to help people, you mm -hmm. know, and I, and, uh, Somebody's I would, it. I would say we've been fortunate so far that unless Tim knows someone, I have not had anyone that we've asked to be on the show asked to be paid. And I would flat out no. say no, if they did attempt to. Yeah. That no, should nobody be has asked an me interview that. questionnaire. Are you a self-serving jerk? Yes. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Maybe yeah. we're a little bit differently. Right. Yeah. Tim, what Tim, you got any anything you want to add on this as far as what some of Brian's wisdom here? I, I just think this is really a really great topic and appreciate for be, him for being here, taking time out of his busy schedule. Um yeah, that, that's all I really have. Just thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, let's, we will go with one last question though, because I think this is a critical question and, and I'm sure that Brian has an opinion. Should small businesses outsource their marketing and how do they make the right choice of who to use? Oh yeah, this is such an important point and this is definitely worth asking. This might be the most important thing we talk about all day. So if you as the business owner, the founder don't understand marketing, how do you hire people inside the company or outside the company? It's just not going to work. If you can't truly appreciate what marketing is gonna do for you, it's not gonna work out right. So I think you either have to have the mind of a marketer or you have to hire somebody to have the mind of a marketer. And remember all those experts that we're gonna collect instead of full service nonsense? If you have, let's say you hire just a, 
a marketer, chief marketing officer, I don't know, whatever you want to call this person, your marketing expert internally, they might get away with being a generalist to help transform the vision. And then they can help you pick and choose the right experts to bring in, right? You don't need to overload them to make them build a website and email and infographics and social and everything. You should entrust them to make the right decisions to band together all the experts because that person should be your quarterback or you should be the quarterback. Just kind of depends on how you work, right? So some people, they're the tech people. Some people, they're the salesy, grandstanding show person, gets on stage kind of guy. Some of them, they're more like the reserved accountant, financial people. All these different people put what needs to go into the overall soup, right? But somebody needs to run that corner of marketing. And it just depends on how it is. Um, another book, Seth Godin's Lynchpin, right? So just kind of be remarkable. It's not necessarily all the bulleted points that are in the job description. So let's say you are a technical founder and you don't understand marketing at all. One of the greatest gifts you'll understand is that you're not a marketer and you need somebody to help you round out that side of the brain. Great. So I think that's a, a super important thing to just know yourself, be super honest. Don't just try to be great at everything. That's a waste of your talents. Double down on what you're great at and hire and delegate for the rest. Some stuff makes sense internally. Some stuff makes sense to do outside. It's all putting it all together in the right time intentionally. Yeah. And Tim, you, you've done that recently where you've brought someone on to help you grow your business. You want to talk a little bit about that and how you made that decision? Sure. Yeah. So last year, um, I was really at the point where my business was, I either couldn't take on new clients or I had to bring somebody on to help. So I brought on, I was so lucky. I found her, I put a post on LinkedIn. She go. lives 20 minutes away and she is an uh, amazing uh, graphics and branding. And she handles some of our social media accounts and just so blessed. Uh, it has reduced my stress level uh, and our clients are, are even more happy having her on board as well. So Fabulous. Um, yeah, that's pretty much my story yeah. there. Yeah. And, yeah. That, and it, yeah, it is. So it's so important. And so and Rose says, yeah, double down on what you're great at and delegate the rest. Great, great point, Rose. Uh, and I, I equated to, uh, I know Andrew and Pete, when they were the closing keynote speakers at social media marketing world, you know, it's the 90, 10 rule, do that one thing you're good at. And then you can start to work on that other 10%. And I think that's that's some of what you've really been been stressing today here, Brian, is like, you know, you got to do what you're good at and not allow yourself to fall into this trap of, you know, doing other things, um, I, I'll say, half-baked. Yeah. Um, you, you know, try to be the marketer when you're hiring the marketer. I love that one, right? It's like, so let's say you make toaster ovens. So go make the toaster ovens. Keep making them better. Don't burn the toast. Pick different colors of it. Make more <laughs> slots or something. Make uh, like an Internet of Things toaster so you know when the toast is ready because you can't just go across the room and see that the toast is... All right, we're not going to do that one. But <laughs> it's like now you're going to be a marketer on top of it. Yet at the same time, I would tell you that all companies should think of themselves as a media company, right? That's becoming ever more important in today's world. Whoever has the most technological product grid does not win the day. Just because you're first or you're early also doesn't mean you're going to win because the next batch of people could eat you for lunch. Think right. of yourselves as a marketing company, as a media company, as a media organization, and you will go far. Yeah. And I think, and, and you and you hit on this earlier too. I mean, when you look at things like TikTok, right? Like, oh, you got to be on TikTok. Oh, you got to be on Byte. But it's like, if it doesn't fit your brand or your product, why would you do it? Just because everybody says to do it. It's almost like a, a lemmings thing in my Yeah, in my would life. you just run on the dance floor naked? <laughs> Tim, you don't have to answer that. <laughs> you don't have to actually answer all of my crazy thoughts. But if you think about that and you recoil, that's how you should approach every social network that you don't know anything about. You're walking on naked. Put some clothes on first. Learn what the people like there. I'm not saying to pander to the audience. Let's be clear about that. I do not pander to the audience at all. The stuff that I post... I find interesting. So when I think about what should I post today on LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever, is this something that I'm actually proud of putting out there? If it's not, guess what? It's not going to work. We talked about Seth Godin a minute ago. You know what Seth says? Arguably one of the most brilliant marketers of our time, built all sorts of stuff for the internet, 
world famous keynote speaker who's written all sorts of best selling books left and right. What, like 20, 30 of them, whatever. The guy's been around a long time. And he's amazing, right? And yeah. he has his Seth's blog and he barely participates in social media. You know what's fascinating about something he said once? He said, for every blog post that sees the light of day, there's 20 other posts that I don't ever show to the world. So here's this marketing genius who's admitting that he's one for 21, yet everybody else is a freaking genius because they're walking down the block giving a minute video of their popcorn preaching wisdom. That's nothing more than motivational BS that doesn't actually do anything. Wow. So yeah, a little bit. That's awesome. So Brian, where's the where's the best place to follow you? I know we we have uh, LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, you you said you're you're actually on all the socials as now sourcing. Is that correct? That's right. Because I'm blessed and or cursed with a very very common first and last name combination. So there's quite a number of people who actually are famous with my name too. So just to keep it easy for people, so you don't have to pick and choose which Brian it is. And people will like always hit me up on Facebook. Hey, you're this Brian Wallace. That's the third cousin. It's like, no, I'm not. Just move on with your life. So if you search my name and the word now sourcing, you'll generally find me all across social media. You can always see all the great stuff that we do at nowsourcing.com. And uh, over the last year or so, I've developed a podcast called Next Action, which you can find at nextaction.cc. Pretty sure .com was taken, so .cc, close enough. Awesome. Tim, any final thoughts? Uh, just once again, thank you for being on the show. We really appreciate it. And uh, Jim, our guest next week is Megan Powers, right? That's right. We're going to be talking about how you can manage events on social and, and how it's important to not only get your events out there early so people know about it, but also how to create that fear of missing out. And I'm so glad that Brian's going to be, I believe, again at Social Media World Lima um, in June. At least I hope he will be, because that's how we originally met. Right. And, and Brian, you actually have a big event you'll be going to soon. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Oh, yeah, a little bit. Just this tiny little event uh, in less than a month. Oh, my gosh. In three weeks from now called South by Southwest. So if you are a marketer and you've never heard of South by Southwest or you read on the Internet that it's not cool anymore, then you're probably an idiot. And let me reframe it for you. So let's just say that there's this thing called the World's Fair, like back in the day. It's like yeah. the modern day World's Fair. So about 300,000 people get together and change the face of the internet as we know it. It started about 30 plus years ago as a music festival, but that's not important. There's also a film aspect, but that's not important because we're talking to marketers today. The interactive part is important to your life and I guarantee it. Let me tell you something. You ever hear of Twitter? When did you hear of Twitter? When did you all join Twitter? Ooh. I think I, I actually only joined about four years ago. <laughs> okay, we won't hold it against you. I know. I had to learn. Yeah, I don't even first. remember when I joined. <laughs> I joined in a while, almost thirteen years ago. But nobody, almost nobody in the world, heard about Twitter until it just exploded on the scene at South by Southwest that March of two thousand seven. So the growth of real time news, and you can complain about politics or whatever, but the the growth of real time news as a medium was popularized and proven there. Also, you have Forge Square and geolocation, live streaming, hello, what are we doing right now? Meerkat, all that stuff, all the deal flow, all the collaborations and intersections came out there. I remember one year, one of the earliest years I went, when you only had your iPhone out on AT&T, there were so many power, like sucking all sorts of videos and whatever off the pipe users we crashed the AT&T grid for the city and they had to bring in like all this emergency oh. equipment. It brings about five or $600 million into the city. Austin has grown by, it has doubled in the last 10 years. Every time I go there, they're like adding new buildings to the skyline. So the level of access that you have with virtually every other country in the world, every industry, everybody gets together. So it's not just a social media conference where we all join hands and take pictures of each other. That's great, but like we could do that right here. We're pr literally proving that. Do we yeah. even need to go to events? I'd still arguably say yes, but it doesn't have to be every day. I worry when people only go to events. You kind of also have to get work done once in a while. But here, instead of flying to 30 places to look fancy, I can go to one place for one week, see everybody I know on the internet, make tons of money, and call it a day or call it a week and be passed out like crazy. So please go to it. Um, just go to southbysouthwest.com 
sxsw.com to learn all about it. This is going to be my 11th year going. I'm on the advisory board and know a lot, a lot, a lot about it. But we would probably need our own show to go through that one. But thank you for bringing it up. Yes. Well, I know I know you're very passionate about it. And I, I've heard amazing things about it. And it's definitely uh, on my list of one of those places I know I, I definitely want to go. And, it's a uh, career maker. Yeah. I mean, I would say outside of other factors, it is one of the most influential pieces that has helped build our reputation as a national slash global brand. That's amazing. Well, Brian, thank you. Yeah, thank, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, Brian. And it would be great. We'll have you on again sometime if you would be willing to join us and uh, look forward to seeing you again uh, in person soon. I think that like I, I'm with you that it's great to do the online stuff, but really getting to meet people in person. I, I think uh, that's ultimately what this is all about, right, is to get to know people in real life. And so thanks again. Tim, any final thoughts? Thank you for the third time and have a great week, everybody. See you next time? week. Awesome. with Megan Powers uh, on next week's Tim and Jim show. Thanks everyone. See you everyone. Thanks guys.